Happily for my, for my two friends, nothing bad happened, but it can go terribly wrong. So just bear that in mind. You know, you might end up in a threesome that you're not really gonna enjoy. Yeah, seriously savage consequences with that one. Experience. Всем привет and welcome to another episode of the Volka Valkast with me Connor Klein. This is the Zara Experience and today it's actually a little bit more of a sensitive episode of this Valkast. I'm going to be talking about alcohol and Belarus and how you can avoid some of the worst consequences of that if you are drinking here in Belarus because Belarus, at least up until recently, the statistics said that it was the country with the highest alcohol consumption per capita in the world. So definitely it's something that you need to be aware of if you come here to Belarus. And also, most of the tips in this video apply to uh, other countries in the region like Lithuania or I might have pick on Lithuania ah, because they are now officially the heaviest drinkers in the world, apparently, uh, from the stats I saw. Uh, but it's all much of a muchness in this region like Poland, Russia, Ukraine, Moldova. Uh, people tend to drink a lot of alcohol especially when they go out at the weekend compared to other countries that you probably visited. If you haven't visited here so much, it's definitely something that you need to be aware of. So in this video, I'm going to be outlining a few, just telling you a few different anecdotes that you can learn from and things to watch out for and a little bit of a strategy how you can avoid the worst effects of drinking with Belarusians if you are going to drink while you're here. Now, I do call this vodka the vodka vodka, but I don't actually normally drink a vodka at the beginning of each episode. I have done that sometimes, but uh, this time this is not sponsored by Beluga, but uh, if Beluga is watching, then please, <laughs> then please feel free to uh, sponsor me in lieu of, uh, you know, promoting your bottle, your brand on uh, today's episode. So I think it's appropriate to start today's episode because it is about alcohol with an actual shot of vodka. Seems to uh, be the way I should go on this one. This bottle was actually given to me by one of my um, by one of my clients uh, who came with me here recently to Minsk and definitely did uh, drink quite a lot of alcohol uh, on that trip. So thanks, man. He has to rename anonymous for his own work purposes. But uh, yeah, Nastrovia uh, Slonch is what we would say in Ireland. You can see, of course, say Nastrovia in um, Belarus. You can speak in Russian here. It's one of the two official languages, actually language that nearly everybody speaks in daily life, although Belarusian is also a language and an official language. So, bottoms up. That is particularly good vodka. So, now that the vodka vodka has finally has me uh, drinking vodka after an absence of um, a good few episodes, let's get into uh, today's video and advising you about how you can avoid the worst effects of drinking excessively in a country like Belarus. Now, if you have been watching a lot of my videos, you'll see that I refer to actually where I am from. I know I don't have a particularly strong Irish accent, but I was born in Ireland and I grew up there. Now, the Irish are famous the world over for many things. Irish dancing, St. Patrick's Day, and one integral part of uh, St. Patrick's Day for sure is a drinking and of course we have our national drinks like Guinness whiskey is also a big uh, domestically produced alcoholic beverage um, there's lots of famous whiskey brands so growing up in Ireland and drinking myself uh, you are exposed to a lot of heavy drinking there's a lot of excessive drinking you can say there's a lot of closet alcoholism that might not actually be defined in that way by a doctor but definitely it's a drinking culture and that's what I grew up in so you would assume that I am very well prepared. It's basically the alcohol and drinking lots of alcohol is in my DNA, in my, as I am actually 90% Irish. So you would think it's running through my veins, the alcohol, and I'd be really well prepared for coming to a country like Belarus. I mean, how much more alcohol can they actually drink in Belarus compared to Ireland, which is like famous for drunken revelry, especially, well, actually in Ireland, it's actually all through the week, I think. But here in Belarus, it tends to be more at the weekend that people go out and drink and socialize in that way. Now, Belarus, as I alluded to at the beginning of today's Vodka is a country that has an extremely high uh, consumption of alcohol per capita. It was, when I had looked up the stats uh, and actually seen a number, it said they were number one, number one in the world for alcohol consumption. But 
in a previous video, my friend Dasha, when we were in Minsk, pointed out that Belarus actually lost that number one uh, place to Lithuania, but uh, yeah, actually a lot of Belarusians moved there in the meantime, so maybe they pushed up the uh, alcoholic consumption rate there, the alcohol consumption rate per capita in Lithuania. But anyway, it's much of a muchness. Basically, uh, Belarusians definitely drink a lot of alcohol per person in the country, and it's definitely something to be aware of. Now, I'm going to just jump into a few illustrative uh, anecdotes for you about what it's like. So about oh, it would be close to a year ago, I was in Brest, which is a city in the extreme west of Belarus, near to the Polish border, and it actually has a very special visa-free regime, which means you can cross the border if you get authorization, pre-authorization and stay. The time was for five days in effect uh, there, but you had to actually stay in Brest. You can't travel to other parts of the country. So I went there, and then at the end of my five days, I took a bus back to Warsaw, which is pretty easy to do. There are lots of buses going, I guess, one an hour. And uh, it was pretty, yeah, it was like early evening when we left. Uh, I can't actually remember how long the journey is. It's probably, it's about three hours travel time, except for the border, and the border takes about an hour. So, oh no, it's a four hour trip. And actually, Brest is located right at the border. So you start off basically at the border. So you have that first hour where you're kind of obviously going through immigration and maybe they check um, about the Belarusian and Polish side. Maybe they check your belongings, see if you're smuggling something, I guess, or if you're carrying something you should be uh, transporting. And then afterwards, you have like a three hour um, journey to Warsaw. Now I was on the bus and I was sitting near the back of the bus and there was maybe about five or six young Belarusian guys, um, maybe in their 20s, and they were eating some food that one of them had brought, and they were drinking something out of a bottle. Uh, and they, maybe two of them knew each other, but basically they'd all just met on the bus, and they were like sharing the alcohol and sharing the food, and they invited me to join in. Now, at the beginning, I said uh, I declined actually to drink the alcohol. They were drinking out of like uh, a bottle but I don't think that was the original bottle. I'm pretty sure it's what's known as Samagon or Samagon, which is in effect moonshine. They basically had this bottle of moonshine, so homemade liquor, and they were sharing it. Now, I had refused it uh, once, twice, at least twice I refused it. Uh, and then eventually they gave me something to eat. It was like maybe a blini. And then the third time, I guess all good things happen in threes, uh, they, third time's a charm. I guess that's the expression we would use. Uh, I accepted just to have one shot of this alcohol. Now, I drank it. It was um, maybe with honey, if I remember. It's definitely something that made it sweeter. It made it easier to drink. And actually, I didn't feel the alcohol very much as a result. And then I remember taking a second one and a third one. And then pretty much, I don't remember anything after that. So the next morning, I just woke up with a massive, massive hangover. I was in a room. Uh, my suitcases were there, my camera bag was there, and my, my vlogging camera, my Canon 80D on its gorilla pod with the shotgun mic, the fluffy dead cat, that whole setup was just sitting on the table. Uh, but I had no idea where I was. And I came out and there was a girl there and she spoke to me in French. Uh, I do speak French. I have lived in France and also in Brussels and Belgium for a long time. So French is obviously not a problem. And uh, obviously I had a very sore head pretty hungover and uh, this girl speaking to me in French I start chatting to her a little bit nervously because I don't know why she knows I speak French and she's obviously French uh, it turned out she worked for the Alliance Francaise in Warsaw and a Polish guy came out of another room and he said yeah hey how are you feeling today and I immediately uh, apologized because I assumed I had come in very very drunk as I couldn't remember anything and he said no don't worry we all drink a little bit too much sometimes it's not a problem but basically I had arrived in Warsaw and booked this Airbnb uh, apparently sharing a room <laughs> which is not something I normally do normally I take my own apartment but whatever I had selected and um, I taken a taxi there now the Airbnb was inside a courtyard which was inside another courtyard so it was actually really hard to find so I basically uh, shown up extremely drunk um, to the number of the house and then a night porter from um, an adjacent hotel had actually come 
and uh, found the house for me and brought my bags for me, apparently. So that was the kind of disheveled uh, state that I was in. Uh, obviously, I, I mean, I'm extremely lucky that I didn't lose my camera equipment or anything like that, being that drunk in a major European city. But it does show that, uh, yeah, with this homemade alcohol, it can be anything in it and you need to be very careful. It's not like just taking a, a, a snot of, you know, vodka like I just did here. It could be uh, up to twice as strong. So that's something you have to be careful. Uh, obviously, it's Samagon or homemade alcohol. It's definitely going to be a lot, lot stronger than you probably ever drunk before in your life. So just be careful of that when you are offered it. Uh, basically, to be very careful, maybe you could have one, but I would not recommend drinking it. Uh, several of them if you're in a situation obviously where you're traveling what not so the second example I want to give you before I get into how you can deal with um, the alcohol and drinking in Belarusian culture a little bit better happened to me on um, my first trip to Minsk for a few years I had flown there uh, from Budapest it was about a year ago as well um, I think it was just before this trip to Brest even or maybe it was just after sometime around that time so it would have been in May 2018 and basically I went out clubbing uh, I was on my own the city I was trying to explore it uh, having not been there for two years and I went out clubbing and you know sometimes it happens that you know the music it's very high pace you get all that adrenaline you're going out meeting new people uh, I had met actually a cool Lithuanian guy and some girls so we went uh, to another club together and basically I got extremely drunk in the club I was drinking uh, with a girl I met there and then we decided to leave went to an after place which is actually very common here had some breakfast which should have sobered me up but apparently <laughs> not sufficiently uh, and then we got a taxi to go to my place now at this stage it was probably about 9 30 in the morning uh, that's how extreme some of the nights can be here in terms of drinking and partying and it's also something that a lot of girls will do as well and other cultures girls don't drink as much alcohol as guys uh, but here in Belarus I don't see a big distinction between the two it's actually very common to Ireland actually uh, where I grew up is where Irish girls also tend to drink uh, large amounts of alcohol um, very similar to what guys do and basically yeah I, I remember we got to what was supposed to be my address and actually i had completely the wrong address because I, I couldn't remember where i had actually booked my apartment and of course my phone was dead at that stage gonna be up for so long i've been using it so much taking little clips from my instagram stories which is a good maybe point to tell you yeah, definitely if you're not following my instagram stories uh, my instagram go check it out my handle is our experience and basically I was sitting there and had no idea what the dress is because the guy said this is Lenin uh, maybe it was number four and I was like well this is not my apartment you must have messed it up this is prospect whatever uh, and he's like no this is Ulitsa Lenina so basically we drove around for a bit and I was starting to panic because I had absolutely no idea where I was supposed to go and where I was living uh, in the city my phone was dead we tried to find maybe a hotel that was open or somewhere that have like uh, a charger uh, I couldn't go to her place. So basically at a certain point, she actually did pretty well. She managed to keep me, she said, just think about, you know, where did you come out? Uh, and then I remembered actually that there was a metro station pretty close. It wasn't that close, but when I had taken the Uber, uh, Uber actually worked at the time, now it's been discontinued. So we'll say the taxi uh, originally to go out that night, I had passed a metro station and the name was uh, Institut, Institut Kulturi, Kulturni. Institute Kulturni, I guess, and I remember that was nearby. And then actually, the taxi driver completely guessed my address, and eventually we got there. It was 10 a.m. in the morning, and all everything worked out. But that just shows that even though I had been drinking, um, but basically girls the whole night, that we drank a lot of alcohol, and that's something that is uh, might catch you by surprise. Uh, if you're not used to drinking in Belarus, it was just that basically uh, girls drink as much as guys, a bit like Ireland or the UK. And be prepared that it's going to be hard alcohol a lot of the time. Now, so how can you avoid uh, getting those situations like I did? Well, one very, very um, strict rule of thumb that I now use is like, I don't go drinking a one-on-one -on -one with Belarusian guys for sure. So that's my hard and fast rule. I just don't drink with groups of guys. I might have one. Um, shot or something like that but I don't get involved in drinking uh, in you know, these drinking sessions with guys in Belarus it's, you know even though I'm a proud Irishman 
at heart, uh, especially in terms of alcohol and our supposed prowess with that. But I'm, you know, I'm willing to admit that I met my match at times in Belarus, especially on that bus. So basically, I just don't engage. We better just to say no and just stick to it uh, if it's in that kind of situation. Also, because all the time it can be, of course, you should meet guys when you're in Belarus as well. Uh, it's just not only about meeting Belarusi and the beautiful Belarusian girls, but um, like on a bus on the way to Warsaw late at night, it doesn't make sense to start drinking with a, with a bunch of guys, no matter how friendly they are and how much camaraderie you can get. It just leads to uh, you know a little bit of a risky situation. So that's one thing. Just be careful not to drink too much, uh, even if you are with girls. Um, just make sure that you you know your own limits. So if you think it's just me that has these kind of issues, also. Uh, my foreign friends have come here have told me some little stories that they've had some instances when they've drank a little bit too much alcohol here in Belarus I'll not say their names to protect their guilty guilty uh, identities but basically one of them uh, I got a call at like maybe about 11 a.m. after a, a savage night partying uh, together in Minsk and he was basically complaining that he'd had a threesome yeah, I know most guys fantasy but he'd actually was a bit drunk and he didn't want to have sex with the second girl who was involved and she he felt like she kind of forced her way into the threesome uh, so that's something to be obviously very careful of when you come to Belarus is um, yeah if you get too drunk you might end up in a threesome that you're not actually really that keen on um, yeah I had a lot of sympathy for him, obviously, as I was lying there in bed taking the call, like, am I listening to this? Am I hearing it correctly? This is what you got to complain about at 11 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Another uh, British friend, actually, uh, he told me that he got so drunk actually just drinking with a Belarusian girl, which is, again, um, you know, what I was talking about, that that is a policy that might not actually 100% save you from getting too drunk here and actually became really paranoid uh, that the girl was trying to rob him in his hotel room and he called security so yeah he called security on a girl that basically was probably only trying to steal his innocence or his heart at the best uh, at the worst uh, in the worst case scenario and basically the next morning he told me he felt uh, a little bit silly uh, but he said he doesn't understand it he just got so drunk with her uh, drinking shots uh, he'd actually been at a bar and seen it said that he'd actually see me uh, but was already too uh, basically um, hammered in order to come over and, and talk to me in the bar and had gone home with the girl she did remind him the next morning what he'd actually done it actually called hotel security on her accusing her of being a thief uh which was just pure drunken paranoia apparently so there are just two kind of amusing anecdotes i have found which leads me on to what are you doing next weekend like you've gotten to the end of another vodka podcast with actually some vodka involved this time and you know one of the things I help my clients with the most is actually dealing with this and making sure that um, we control not necessarily the amount of alcohol I mean if, if you really want to drink uh, that's fine but you're gonna have me with you to protect you make sure that you don't drink too much uh, and obviously that you don't have problems like get robbed or you know have <laughs> a hookup with a guy who's really a girl <laughs> that has never happened to any of my clients just to make sure just to make that 100% clear and it's unlikely to happen here in Belarus there are no lady boys uh, that I've ever encountered at least in this part of the world fortunately uh, so that's not a nasty surprise you're likely to get but still you get my you understand my point that having me there um, being able to show you exactly the best places to go introduce you to beautiful girls uh, help you with your interactions with the girls understanding the cultural differences and making sure you don't get too plastered as we like to say in Ireland that you're actually able to take them home at the end of the night and have that enjoyable enjoyable experience and so if you are you know tempted you've seen my mince nightlife video I understand you're probably, you know, working in your office all week, you know, you've been a, been a successful guy, uh, but it just doesn't feel right what you're getting as an experience when you go out uh, where you're living at the moment. And here you're just going to have the time of your life, I promise you. So write me an email at connorkline at zarexperience.com. My Instagram handle, you can DM me there, is zarexperience, and you can have the opportunity to live the Zara experience, write me a message. I'll see 
if we're a good fit to work together. I don't take on everybody. This experience is not for everybody. Listen, if you're not willing uh, to, you know, step out of your comfort zone, come somewhere that people are not normally uh, traveling to and just have, you know, a little bit more of a extreme experience, to be honest, in a good way, then this is not going to be for you. If you're not willing to, to do those things, then you can stick to other things. But you're at the end of this video and I know that that's what you want. You know, I'm here in Belarus this weekend. Uh, it's now actually Thursday evening. I'm about to go on a date actually in a few minutes. And you could be joining me tomorrow. Uh, I know this video is going to go out later, but you catch my drift. Like, write me if you want to live the Czar experience. And as I said, if we're a good fit to work together, it'll happen. Could be next weekend. Okay, so if you have any stories yourself and you want to be a little bit more vulnerable in the comments, then let me know. Uh, I'd be interested to hear some of your very drunken escapades and some things that happened to you. Uh, maybe some of them are unflattering like they've been maybe a little bit today in today's video for me, but I learned from them. That's the important thing. Uh, like everything in a life that doesn't kill you, um, that's unfortunate. You tend to learn from it if you're wise enough and you don't repeat those mistakes and you move on and develop. So definitely let me know and let all the other people who watch this video know as well. Uh, you know, that's one of the great things that I see with YouTube. It's not just about me. Uh, as the expert, as I know, because I'm giving you the advice, you know, being here in uh, Belarus and Ukraine and Russia and other parts of Eastern Europe. Also, you can contribute and you can share information and your experiences and help other guys. And that's really what I love to see in the comment section. It's just a lot of this uh, information sharing and anecdotes and experiences. And it really, really makes the channel so much more valuable. So thank you. Um, for previous comments and definitely let everybody know down below in the comments section. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. The reason that is not for my ego. I don't really care on a personal level how many likes these videos get, but what it does help me with is deciding what kind of content to create uh, because I don't look so much at the number of views a video gets. That's because I get feedback from my clients that often they really, really love a particular video that has like a very small number of views, maybe one or 2000 views. And you know, they saw the videos that have a million or half a million, all this stuff that's very, very, uh, the stuff that goes viral a lot of times it's because of the title, the subject matter, and actually the thumbnail, which often has a very pretty girl in it. Uh, but that's not actually where they get the most value from. And they've told me that it's often these smaller videos. Uh, so what I try to look at is engagement, which is like the likes and the comments. And so if you've enjoyed this video, then definitely uh, leave a like at the very least and comment below. And that'll let me know that this is the kind of, um, kind of video that you've enjoyed and got a good bit of value out and learned something. And I'll know, that, okay, then I can make something similar uh, going forward and make this channel even more valuable to you. Um, yeah, it's uh, the evening and my date actually is about to start. Uh, oh, I'm going to be maybe a little bit late to it. It's supposed to be in 10 minutes. So I'm going to end today's video. I wish you a really enjoyable day, evening, morning, wherever you're waking up at the moment or just about to go to sleep or in the middle of your work day. Uh, have a blast and yeah, Hope to see you one day here in the raw east of Europe. Desvidanya from Gomo, Belarus. And be sure not to be careful not to drink too much this weekend, wherever you are. Ciao. Sar experience.